doesn't just cleanse but it gives life hallelujah the life of Christ is in his blood and his life is not a sinful life he's releasing his life in you that you become a new creation your life was contaminated through Adam and his sin and the sin that you partook of but in Christ you are a new creation hallelujah and he washes white as snow without a spot without a wrinkle without a blemish total thorough cleansing come on someone whom the son set free is free indeed hallelujah and you got to know that he washed away every sin every debris every chaff every shell every dregs of sin has been removed through the blood of Jesus when you are cleansed by him it's no partial cleansing he does a thorough job and he wants it to stay that way. So he said, these are, they have kept their garments spotless. They didn't make it spotless, but they kept it spotless being that they were cleansed. Hallelujah. It's in Revelation, praise God, that they kept their garments white hallelujah and they were not appointed to destruction but to salvation huh it's revelation 7 verse 14 said sir you know he said who are these who stand in robes of white around your throne he says sir you know these are the ones who come out of great tribulation and wash their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Praise God. But we thank God that they have kept their garments white. And they kept have to do with our obedience to the Lord. We didn't obey God for that cleansing to come. We just submitted to him. And he cleansed us. We came to him and he cleansed us from all sin. But then we must keep in him. And he says, abide in him. Huh? And he said, if you abide in him and his word abide in you, you will be a fruit. Huh? And much fruit and fruit that remains. Huh? Praise God. You may be seated. You're going to get into the word. You want to get persons, hearts prepared for the word because we know as the word of God declares, we don't live by bread alone. But by what? Every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And just as people labor hard to gain bread because they recognize the importance for bread to feed the body. Food is needed for the body. Then he says, yes, food is needed for the soul. <laughs> and uh, soul food <laughs> comes through the word. <laughs> Praise God. Without the word, you are going to starve and die. You are going to lose your soul. Hallelujah. But God wants your soul to be saved. Hallelujah. You are not just made flesh and blood. Your body is made of flesh and blood. But you are a spirit being that lives in that body. You are what? A spirit being that lives in that body. Hallelujah. And just as the body needs to be fed, the spirit needs to be fed. Hallelujah. Come on. And you labor hard to gain income to make sure you can feed yourself and your children and your loved ones. Huh? And even those you might not know that you see need. You can stretch your hands and say, here. Huh? 
because he says them you you are trying to give them the same satisfaction you feel in the flesh from knowing that you have ate something and something is keeping you huh your strength so when you eat those food and it's giving some strength to your body because when anybody's without food the body starts to get weak anybody do fasting will know that well some I do the fasting nowadays so they won't feel no weak because their part time thing don't give no weakness right but if you are of course fasting for an extended period of time you'll know this is something that comes with fasting weakness of the flesh hallelujah and, and Jesus body was weak after he fasted hallelujah huh and after he fasted, there was a great hunger that came upon him after his fasting had ended. And this the devil saw as an opportune moment to run in, to try to drag Jesus off. Huh? Into obeying him over the instructions the Father gave him. Come on. He said, if you are the Son of God, Command these stones become bread. That's in Matthew 4, verse 2 and 3. Come on. He said, Yes, when the fasting was ended, he hungered. Huh? And he said, The devil now, the tempter came to him and said, If you are the Son of God, command that these stones become bread. You don't have to suffer. And endure the hunger he says but because you are son of God so if you're son of God do something about it come on and he answered and said it is written what did he answer and said it is written therefore is quoting from scriptures that was written by men but inspired and spoken by God and if the scriptures were not trustworthy, he wouldn't be quoting from it to the devil. Ah, come on now. So he said, it is written. Come on. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by what? Every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Come on. He was telling him, man doesn't live only because he's eating bread because it's not bread that gave man life it's the word that gave man life and it's the word that also commanded man what he should eat to sustain his body right so the word also command that men should eat bread come on to eat food for the body but at the same time, it's the word that gave man his existence. So it says, you don't live by bread alone. It's not that you don't need bread. But he says, not that alone. And some have satisfied just to work for their bread. <laughs> and say they make life for themselves because they have more than enough to their content. But the Lord said, uh -uh. you don't live by bread alone, but you live by what? Every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. This was a quote from Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 3. As we said, it was already recorded by man that just was quoting why he says, it is written. All right. And it was quoted from what Moses had spoken to the people in Deuteronomy. Verse 3, he says, let's start from verse 1, thank you. Hallelujah. He says, every command which I command you today, you must be careful to observe that you may live and multiply. So he says, every command which I command you today, you must be careful to observe them that you may what? Live. He 
says, you will live if you are obedient to my word. And you will increase. Talk about and multiply. See that? And go in and possess the land which the Lord swore to your fathers. He says, God has prepared a land for you long before you got here. And you're not here by some accident. And you have to be worrying, say, how oh, you're going to make it. God had planned for you before you got here. And he's saying then, but this is conditioned on your obedience to him. Look at that. He said, observe carefully to do all that he has commanded you. That you may live and multiply and go in and possess the land which the Lord swore to your fathers. And you shall remember huh, that the Lord your God led you all the way these 40 years in the wilderness. Huh? God led you 40 years through a dry place. My God. So how did you survive that dry place? Come on. He said it was he that kept you through it. The wilderness didn't have not much to offer you. But he kept you in the wilderness. And carried you through it. And he then said why did he carry you through it? Huh? To humble you. Come on now. To what? Oh, come on. First thing Jesus said is required for one to be his true disciple, to follow him, is that they must first deny themselves. That speaks of humility. Come on. That speaks of what? Humility. They must humble themselves. They must humble themselves. Hallelujah. And what? He brought them that way to humble them and to what? And to test them. They must be tested. Uh-huh. They must be what? Tested. To know what is in their heart. You see, the test often exposes things that are deeply hidden in your heart some things are there under the earth that is not exposed until there's a shaking there's a plowing there's a rooting up then you see some things start to come up on the surface he says some things are there in your heart that the wilderness experience was necessary to excavate, to expose, that we can get it out, that when we bring you into the land, you will have permanent residence there. You won't be like those who were there before who were cast out because of the evil that they done. But he says, you will inherit the land. Come on now. Huh? You will what? Right? So he says, but that is conditioned upon their obedience to the word of God. Today, people don't believe the word of God has nothing to do with their prosperity, with their life, with their health. With their relationships, with their business, everything is done from their own wits, their own ability, their own intelligence. Ah, they don't seek what the Lord is saying or what the Lord wants to say regarding what they are doing. So it can reap the full reward. And then when it doesn't, they get angry. They get corrupt. Wicked thoughts come into their minds. And they start to get vicious against those 
who are not doing certain things that they are doing but reaping some things that they are not reaping Lord Jesus this we found was true from the beginning even between two brothers called Cain and Abel and in Genesis 4 the Lord made an example of this this was documented in Genesis 4 to show us what happened between two brothers and to give us some insight between those who hear and obey the word from those who, who, who deny and reject the word and their lives are totally different both men but different outcome and different lives come on both human beings both living in the world both brothers of the same parents but different life different verdict different response from God look at this and in Genesis 4 reading from verse 6 verse 3 in verse 3 it says in the process of time it came to pass that Cain brought an offering of the fruit of the ground to the Lord Cain brought an offering from the fruit of the ground because Cain was a farmer he was a farmer and so he would have to bring from what he produced as a sacrifice he couldn't bring sacrifice from somebody else's things and make it his sacrifice it has to be from what he's producing and because he's a farmer he brought the offering from the fruit of the ground that he was farming Abel on the other hand was a shepherd Abel also brought of the first fruit the firstborn of his flock and of their fat there it is you see it and the Lord respected Abel and his offering but he did not respect Cain and his offering notice it's not just Cain's offering that was not respected but God did not respect Cain read it again you will see he says and the Lord respected Abel and his offering but he did not respect Cain and his offering and Cain was very angry come on now and his countenance fell ah oh boy fears get long huh come on now and what happened next so the Lord said to Cain why are you angry why has your countenance fallen if you do well look at that he didn't say if you feel well if you do well he didn't say if you believe well <laughs> he said if you do well huh you will you not be accepted you see God does not show partiality he said if you do well will you not be accepted and if you do not well what happens sin lies at the door sin what lies at the door and its desire is for you what is his desire desire that sin has for you he says is that sin wants to rule over you but what the Lord say he must do but you should rule over it can you rule over sin oh yes that's from the beginning come on now Adam already sinned 
Come on, those who are born, we are already born sinners. Cain and Abel is no different. We are born sinners. But Abel chose a different path of life than Cain. And God had respect to Abel, but did not respect Cain. Or some will say, no, God respect everybody. Not so. We just took it to the written word to show you this. The difference of when you respond to the word in a favorable way, how God responds to you. And when you don't, how does God respond to you? Watch it. He says, if you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not well, he says, sin lies at the door and its desire is for you. But you should what? Rule over it. Now, if the Lord could tell Cain, you should rule over it before Jesus Christ come here and die to take away sin. You want to tell me, say, over 2,000 years after Jesus died for sins, you still can rule over it? Yes, I believe it is a good question too. Yes. So I don't know why they're saying, no, it can't be done. Nobody done perfect. So why the Lord said to Cain, you should rule over it. Come on. If it was impossible for him to do it, the Lord wouldn't tell him to do it. Cain talked with his brother Abel. That don't know what he said. Now Cain talked with his with Abel's brother. And you think say, everything done, it squash it nice. But he did not rule over it. He had a different path of how he walked and how he lived. Huh? You can come inside and enjoy the thing. Okay, bless you. All right. So it says, he came to pass that when Abel talked with his brother, came to pass when they were in the field. They were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and what? Kill him. Come on. They were not little boys when Cain killed Abel, nor were they the only children that, that Adam and Eve had. But the, sim the important thing that is marked in Genesis is not telling you every name a child that Adam and Eve have. What Genesis is focused on is first the theme Genesis is coming through all the book for those who have not studied it to know that and that's why those who just read it just as a as a newspaper following from one line to the other will sometimes feel like they miss something because it confused them when they read a certain passage. Because it's not following just every detail that happened, but identifying first, first man, first woman, first deal. You see what I'm saying about first murder, first sin. If you don't know that and read it, you'll not get an understanding. So like many who read it, will read and they said, see here we found that Cain killed Abel and Cain going to a country and go marry one of the women them there. Where the women them come from? Because they don't know this time when Cain killed Abel, they were full grown men of their own field. They were living with mom and dad. They're the own man. They're big men. Grown men. Huh? Yes. So many other children were born before they were grown men. And I can't even give you a glimpse of that one because my grandfather was very busy. Very, very busy. They make jokes off him at bar. And some don't even know his name. 
And some use this name without even knowing it says him, say one. But <laughs> Hallelujah. Huh? But, but if he could at 74, at 74, have 54 children, and people in Adam's days was living to 700, 800, and 969 for Methuselah. How much children could you have? Most persons were having their first child at 350 odd years old. Still considered young. So how much children could be already born before Cain kill Abel? The point is not to point how much other children were there. The point is that they are making the emphasis that after the first sin, what was the next first that happened? And that first murder was one between two brothers. So it was, it was taken out of the whole history of what happened and placed up front because of how, the, how well, the tragic the whole circumstance was. Huh? And so just like the first sin, it wouldn't be that the first sin, that Adam's sin, was the only sin. There are many other sins. But that was the first. That's why Adam and Eve one was mentioned first. Got it? So the book of Genesis is about theme of first. Hallelujah. You got it? Hallelujah. And so they, 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 they sh when you read it with that understanding, you get a greater understanding of what is there. Persons who might still want to argue say, no, we don't think say so. They can go into Genesis 5 or 6 and see the generic genealogy of Adam. And you see that Adam lived to 700 and odd years old. And yes, and he had a whole heap of children. Right, so you'll see that it wasn't just Cain and, and, and Abel and then upset to replace Abel that was dead by Cain. There's far more children than that, but the story was surrounding first things that were marked in Genesis. Genesis thing from the word genes, which speaks of origin. So the book Genesis speaks is like the book of origin it speaks how the earth first came into being how creation first came into being how stars first came into being sun day night sun moon stars seasons all of those are in genesis see so when you read it you get a better understanding it's not so praise god yes it was genesis 5 verse 3 verse 5 verse 5, it says that Adam lived, what, 930 years and died. 930 years and died. Come on. So how much children could he have? Uh, well, we know that the food and, and the nutrition that and things that we are gaining from the ground now is weak compared to what it was then. So men was living longer, people were a lot stronger. But sin get rampant in the land, man. And the more sin get rampant, the more the drought get rampant. The more disasters get rampant. Come on now. The more barrenness get rampant, immorality and perversion flood the land affects even nature. Come on. Because there are things that sin being in a man causes him to do that God never intended man to do. And that's why this sin problem is a major one for God. It's not too hard for him because he already made the solution. 
But man needs to believe in the solution. Ah, man needs to what? Yes, he needs to believe in the solution, the answer that God has given to the problem. But they are still trying to seek it their way. So because they turn from the word, they also turn from God. And there's no one that knows more than God. So when you turn from God, you're also turning from knowledge. And in ignorance, men can be very wild, wild and vile. Come on. So this is something that needs to be corrected. Hello? That's why Jesus was saying to Nicodemus, there's a need for man to be born again. You're hearing me? He says the first birth got messed up. Adam never had any children until he and Eve had sinned. So the children that they're having are already corrupted through the source they're coming from. Those they're coming from already in sin. Adam and Eve did not come from anyone in sin. But being that they entered into sin before being fruitful and multiplying, then they are reproducing after themselves, but they are in a, after a corrupt kind. Because they already declared corrupt because of sin. Hello? This is a major thing in the world. People believe now what we need to do is to get more activities for the youth. What we need is more education. What we need is more jobs and opportunities. What we need is better roads, better housing, better work programs and social programs. And everybody will live fine and all right. But as long as sin is in the camp, there can be no peace among us until sin is eradicated from us. The Lord knows that. He didn't make us to be here living in sin. This came because of man's rejection to the world. He, by disobeying God, obeyed what a fallen serpent had said. Come on. The woman obeyed and the man also accompanied her. Huh? And so both fell into sin. Huh? Now so, but the Lord then tells us that there is a way out because from the beginning, when they had sinned, he had spoken to them and the point of revealing their position before him. He had spoken to the serpent and told him, Genesis 3 verse 15, the seed, I will put enmity between you and the woman. Between your seed and her seed, he shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. From the time Adam sinned, Adam heard about Christ. That there be one coming through a woman that would bring deliverance from the bondage that he came into through deception through the serpent. Come on. And it says, although it was initiated through the woman, he says, life would still come through her to bring correction to what brought death. Come on now. And he says, yes, it was a woman who first took and ate of the tree that God commanded her not to eat. But he says, yes, it is woman that God also used to bring his first born into the world and to bring forth a new creation. They are being made new through him. Come on. So he then has to change their mentality of how they think. Because the word of God said, as a man thinketh, 
in his heart so is he the ways that you think carve and shape the things you do the things you value and things that you'll do to get those things that you value and those thoughts are shaped through words words spoken our words thought upon are still words come on but he says you need the right set of words come on now. words that you have been thinking on that have been creating a negative response in you now you need this word huh you need this word to correct those words because lies are still given in words and the devil did say some words to that woman for her to be deceived come on but it's the word of god that will bring correction to the words of the devil but when man reject the word of god they believe the word from the devil is wisdom and they want that wisdom come on but well, that wisdom brings them into ruin brings them into destruction bring them into all kind of hurt and degradation and lowering of values and standards that lead them in down into a spiral my god of things that person would look and say how did you get here come on and it all begins with sin sin is the violation rejection or disobedience of God's word it always comes back to God's word huh God gave a word to man the man was given that word to the woman but the woman hear this from the serpent and believed huh the serpent said to the woman in Genesis 3 verse 4 the serpent said to the woman you will not surely die God said you will surely die but I tell you you will not surely die now two of them cannot be right both of them cannot be right because both statements are against each other come on he says for God he said to the woman for God knows that in the day you eat of it your eyes will be opened and you will be like God knowing good and evil come on but was that true they didn't know that they were naked of course they knew they were naked and why would Adam say flesh of my flesh he wasn't seeing any flesh he saw animals the animals were brought to him and the word of God says he called them by name or whatever name he gave them that was their name that was before the woman was made huh that's recorded in Genesis 2 huh praise God verse 19 yes there it is out of the ground the Lord formed what every beast of the field and every bird of the air and brought them to who brought them to Adam to see what he would call them Adam gave name to them and he says and whatever Adam called each living creature that was its name come on so these it, creatures and beasts and birds and things are being brought to him and he's naming them but the next verse says but for Adam there was none such comparable to him that's in verse 20 so Adam gave names to all the cattle to the birds of the air 
to every beast of the field but for Adam there was not found a helper comparable to him comparable to him watch that and the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall on him and he slept and he took one of his rib close of the flesh in its place then the rib which God the Lord God had taken from the man he made into what a woman and he brought her to the man look at the next verse and Adam said what so so is he seen here or is he just guessing he's seen his eyes are open and he says he says this is now bone of my bone in other words her bone structure and skin texture is not like animals reptile birds it's human human that's why it says it's flesh of my flesh and bone of my bone and she shall be called he named her the type that a being that should be says she shall be called woman and he gave the reason because she was taken out of the man bone was taken from the man flesh taken from him to form her watch that next thing he says therefore what he says therefore a man shall leave his father and mother and be what joined to his wife so he knows there's not just a woman given to him he knows it's a wife because he ain't got no mother and father to leave but he's prophesying of a future generation that will come from both of them and he's saying the love that man will have for his wife will supersede the love for parents come on now consider that leave he says therefore shall a man what leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife and they shall become one flesh what does the next verse say they were both naked the man and his wife see and the man and the woman <laughs> the man and his wife and were not ashamed got it they know they were naked but they never considered it being naked it's not like you you're born and you're seeing people wearing clothes then you know i need to get close to they're the only two in the garden they never found the need to be covered but from the day Adam said we were naked, that expressed a need to be covered. Because he never looked at a woman and said, you're naked. No, he expressed appreciation, adoration and gratitude for her former shape, physique and her personality. Come on now. And he prophesied that others would have similar love for women in such way. Ah. Huh? So why then would he then say to the Lord, We heard your voice, but we were hiding because we were naked and we were afraid. Well, that's what open your eyes and become like God make you naked and afraid. That's what it means when you become like God. <laughs> See, that's what the devil told him was a lie. He didn't become like God by disobeying God. <laughs> you become like God by obeying God. The term like God is where we get the word godly. <laughs> and you can't be godly 
disobeying God. Come on. That's why Ephesians 5 verse 1 says, Therefore be imitators of God as his dear children. Come on now. She was like him. Wasn't that so? And so it could say flesh of my flesh and bone of my bone. And they produce children that are like them. They are also called humans. They are not animals and beasts. Well, some of them behave like it. But that's what they call humans. Huh? So it says it is the disobedience to the word of God that makes you become something other than God created. And he said it is obedience to the word that's going to restore what God intended in the beginning. You got it? Right, so if disobedience made us sinners, obedience will not make us sinners. That's the key right there. So he says, Christ was the model of this. As the only begotten Son of God, he came into the world to reveal to the world a life of obedience from birth to death. Come on. That is not just there for us to look on and become Jesus fans and just say, all oh, hail Jesus, nobody can do it but you. No, he came to make disciples. And if he's making disciples, he's teaching them to live like him. He's teaching them to what? Aha! Uh -huh. And did he commit sin? No. Come on. You got it? So the obedience that he displayed is needful to be seen in us. To be children of God. Got it? Philippians 2 verse 5 to 11. It says, let this mind be in you. Huh? Which was also in who? He says, this mind was in Christ Jesus also. Who being in the form of God. Did not think it proper to be equal with God. He said, when he was in the form of God. It's not robbery to be equal with God, but in our form, he cannot claim that. Look at it. He says, being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation. Taking the form. Did he take a different form? Yes, he did. The form of man as a bond servant is not the form of God. Look at this. But taking the form of a bond servant and coming in what? Coming in the likeness of men. Coming in them. He didn't come in the likeness of God. Uh -huh. Watch this. Continue. And he says then, and being found in the appearance as a man. What is the appearance of a man? Speaking of the body. It's the body that he's wearing. That's the form. And it says, he humbled himself. He what? Being in that appearance, being in this form, he humbled himself and became what? Obedient to the point of death and even what? Not just death, but the death of the cross. Huh? And what was the result of that? The Father, God, also highly exalted him. He says also something more was done huh? by someone else. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, come on, every knee should bow, of those in heaven, 
of those on the earth and of those what under the earth and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is what is Lord owner come on he is owner he is master to the Lord what is that that glory going to to the glory of God the Father come on to the glory of who God the Father oh come on now you got it now this is powerful glory to God those who understand the word understand that the word isn't spoken for you just to hear word the word is spoken to bring us closer to the one the word came from which is God the Father he declared the son that we would know him and become sons glory to God so he's making a new creation through his son so this is not some religious project this is not something about Christianity versus Buddhism and versus Hinduism and Rastafarian all his religion that they talk about Christ didn't come here to start a religion but he came here to declare salvation and to declare the kingdom of God that man has a place in it if he humbles himself to God turn from his wicked ways and do according to what God has required of him come on that will prove loyalty to God and secure his place in his kingdom but the disobedient cannot be counted loyal you got it obedience that's why it says obedience is better than sacrifice it's not just about the sacrifice that Cain offered but the life he was living may God not respect him or his offering and the Lord spoke to him with words to correct his life but instead he submitted to the word he still submit to his feelings to his flesh to his sinful desires and he end up kill his brother and it's in first John 3 verse 10 to 12 it says why then did he kill his brother he killed his brother because his works was evil and his brother's works Abel works was righteous Abel chose a different path than him why didn't Abel kill him who was rejected by God why did he being rejected turn to kill the one that the Lord accepted and approved it's the nature of people that are in sin that once they don't come out of sin they fight against those who do it has not changed from that time till now it is in their nature to fight against those who stand for righteousness when you're still standing for sin because people will defend the things they love and when you love sin you don't want nobody to talk against sin because you love it come on now but the righteous will speak what is right and when you're speaking what is right it goes against what is wrong you get it so no doubt this was no flash of, 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 of temper that just came upon Cain and it just killed his brother in a rush moment this was simmering a while simmering a while in Cain's heart towards his brother that when his brother got accepted and honored by the Lord 
he felt like no man this man was dead come on why then didn't he become like the brother do what the brother is doing to get the honor that he so desperately desires to have but no he sees him as the competition he would then feel like it is Abel's fault why God didn't approve him if Abel never do so well maybe God would approve his if Abel wasn't such a perfectionist wanting to always do things right and good and perfect maybe God would look at his and say he didn't do so bad because notice the anger didn't rage against God it raged against Abel come on they will turn against those who God approve when God has not approved them they will turn against who God respect when God don't respect them they can learn from the one God has chosen but they choose not to ah, and that's what keeps them in their sin God don't send sinners to lead sinners out of sin uh -huh. so that's why Christ is sent and that's why the leaders who God sent to lead the people out of bondage were called holy men and are called sinners sinners don't lead people out of sin you just lead them into more sin but those who are proved by God are those who do well wasn't that what the Lord said to Cain if you do well will you not be accepted but if you do not do well isn't sin lying at your heart's door and it seeks to have mastery over you it seeks to rule over you but he did not take heed to God's word he went and did what he felt like doing come on those who do such things are called children of the devil children of the devil why because they rather evil more than good there are some persons that have fell into works of evil that are desiring to be set free to rise above those things while there are some that are quite compatible they have found their way of life and they believe it's working for them and they're going to work it as long as they can till they die because they said we only got one life and this is how we're going to live it but the word of God said it is appointed unto man wants to die and after death comes the judgment huh? so we know that no matter how men try to do this their own way they have to humble themselves and realize there is a judgment after death come on and if there's nothing to judge there wouldn't be any judgment huh that's Hebrews 9 verse 27 as it is appointed for men to die once but after this what the judgment come on after this after death come on huh so can they continue I think that oh when we die we lost dead there's nothing you're dead you lost dead but Jesus spoke of two that died 
And it wasn't that when they're dead, they're just dead. That's in St. Luke 16. Praise God. He spoke of the rich man and the poor man. Praise God. Rich man, man of diabetes. He said, a certain rich man. That's in 19. Jesus spoke about it. There was a certain rich man who was clothed in purple and fine linen and feared sumptuously every day. You don't say, man, man, the world and the thing, man. The man decked, the man heavy. Man, a dapper. Yes, man, go on. Sumptuously every day. But there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, full of sores, who was laid at his gate, designed to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. Huh? Praise God. So it was that the beggar died. Did the beggar die? There it is. The beggar died and was carried by angels to Abraham's bosom. Is, is not his body carried to Abraham's bosom? Is his spirit? Abraham's body already died. And Abraham's body don't raise up yet. But he is placed in Abraham's bosom, in Abraham's arms. And the rich man also died and was buried. His body was buried. What happened to his spirit? Verse 23 says, And being in torment in Hades. Okay, that's a spiritual place. He lifted up his eyes and saw Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. Come on. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, come on, have mercy on me. Send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue for I'm tormented in this flame. In body dead, so he's still feeling heat and flame. Come on now. This is a spiritual place, but his senses is quite still operable, still operational, and he's still very aware of his past life, and he's even aware that Lazarus is there, but not where he is. <laughs> Because he asked Abraham to send Lazarus. Huh? To what? Send him. But Abraham said, son, remember that in your lifetime. Come on now. That means he knew that he was living in the flesh. But he's still very much alive now talking to him. But he speaks of that life in the flesh as a past life. So you will say there is no life after death. This is the account the son is giving to you. From God. Come on. He says remember that in your lifetime you receive your good things. Things when they go on nice for you man. <laughs> and likewise Lazarus evil things let the disasters eat Lazarus. Come on. But now he is comforted. And you are tormented. Come on now. Come on now. And beside all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed. So that those who want to pass from here to you cannot, nor can those from there pass to us. Then he said, I beg you, dear poor father, that you would send him to my father's house. Or remember his father's house. Yes, 
and he remembers his five brothers too. He says, for I have five brothers that he may testify to them lest they also come to this place of torment. Hello. And Abraham said to him, they have what? They have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. Come on now. Hello. When he says Moses and the prophets, he's not saying they have the prophets and the prophets. Because Moses is a prophet. So he's not saying they have Moses, the prophet, and the prophets. He's saying they have the writings of Moses, which is ascribed as the law. So that was their written word. So he says they have the written word, and they have the preachers of the written word, which they call the prophets. He said, let them hear them. Hear the written word. And hear the preachers. Come on. What is his response? He knew he was not hearing them. And he also knew that his brothers. And the state he left them in. They are not hearing them either. So the whole family book for hell. Come on. He said to Abraham, No, Father Abraham. In other words, they're not going to hear the prophets, nor the written word. <laughs> he says, No, Father Abraham. But if one goes to them from the dead, they will repent. If one goes to them from the dead, Come on. They are not dead more than living. Come on. Huh? He said, Abraham said to him, If they do not hear Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded. Though one rises from the dead, and it's over 2,000 years no one rise from the dead that they mark calendar of him and mark history marks of him come on before and after come on and yet still they still do not believe the word the word nor the preachers of the written word. Uh, come on now. And what has that done for them? Good. <laughs> they had their point of enjoying themselves in that lifestyle. While those who humble themselves and stick to the word were suffering some affliction. He says, many are the afflictions of the righteous. But God will deliver them out of them all. Abraham was telling this rich man, this Lazarus now is being comforted. But you are being tormented. Hello? And he's still there now. I said that man. Jesus spoke about he's still there now. Because the resurrection has not come yet. For that body to be raised up for the final judgment. Oh God. And both hell and death will be cast into the lake of fire. And those whose names have not been found written in the Lamb's book of life. They will taste of what is called the second death. Hello somebody.
they will taste of what is called what? The second death. Glory to God. Revelations 20. Revelations 20 verse 11 to 12 says, Then I saw a great white throne, and him who sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. There was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God. And the books were open, and another book was open, which is the, the book of life. And the dead were judged according to their works by the things which were written in the book. Hallelujah. And the sea gave up the dead. The sea what? The sea gave up the dead who were in it. And death and A.D. See there, the place where that man was thrown into when he died is also cast into the lake of fire. They, they are delivering up those that are in them. The sea gave up the dead that were in it. And death and Hades delivered up the dead who were in them. Death gave them up. Hades gave them up. Sea gave them up. And they were judged each one according to his work. Then death and Hades, there's verse 14. Death and Hades were cast into the lake of fire. Hades is not the lake of fire. Come on. But it is a place of torment for departed souls that are not in Christ. And they will be cast into the lake of fire with Hades and death. Watch this. And he said in verse 14, death and Hades were cast into the lake of fire. This is what? The second death. This is what? This is the second death. And anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Come on, somebody. You hearing this? <laughs> now they say, no. Who go there and come back and tell us it is life after death? No life after death. But because you reject the word of God, then you remain in ignorance. But ignorance will not protect you on judgment day. Because you did not hear the word, now the preachers of the word. And they were sent for you to hear and to believe and to walk in obedience to the word. And he says, by so doing, you would not perish. Ah, but have what? Everlasting life. But you deny the word. Says man write it. So you're not believing it. But you still go to school to read woman right and get grades after it to show other people so you get good grades and degree and qualification after what man right. We don't want that then call your tons. But you go study what man right. If you get a paper so you can get a job. But when this pertain to your soul, now you say, no, you don't want that. Come on, write that. But the word of God says, holy men. Huh? Who wrote it? Not just men. Holy men. Moved by the Holy Spirit. Made record of this. Come on. They weren't writing from what they feel and what they think like you're writing poetry. Hello. The Holy Spirit gave them and told them what to say and what to write. Scripture were given in such a position. Hello. 
second peter one verse 19 to 21 second peter one verse what 19 to 21 says and so we have the what we have the prophetic word confirmed which you do well to heed as a light that shines in a dark place until the day dawns and morning star rises in your hearts knowing this first what should you know that no prophecy of scripture is of any private interpretation for prophecy never came by the will of man but holy men of God spoke as they were what moved by the Holy Spirit if it's not by their will they aren't choosing what they want to say come on it said prophecy never came by the will of man but holy men of God holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit and it was put in record come on somebody hello that's why Jesus could refer to what was written by men in answer the devil when he was tempted to say it is written is quoted from that written record and the devil responded come on even he tried to quote from it too but when jesus answered him with more from it he couldn't stay because though he might quote from the scripture he cannot abide in the scripture there's no place for him there because he's a liar and the father of lies huh come on so we know that those who embrace the word of God is embracing truth and the word of God says you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free but what does the truth make you free from from sin come on that's what Jesus declared in John 8 verse 32 to 34 he said to those who believed in him if you abide in my word that is his teaching it's verse 31 if you abide in my word then you are my disciples indeed huh if you abide in my word you are my disciples indeed and you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free abide in my word dear is his teaching he is the rabbi he is their teacher he is making disciples and he said if they abide in what is teaching they will become truly his disciples and they shall know the truth and the truth shall what make them free now in verse 33 they thought that he was talking about being free from a man but he made it clear to them in verse 34 that it's not free from a man but free from sin he said most assuredly I say to you whoever commits sin is a slave of sin commits is not that they committed sin in the past tense but they committed commit and later will commit more that's why that word is using present continuous tense when it says commits or the old english may say committed committed sin is not a one-off thing watch this look what he says more and he says then but a slave does not abide in the house forever in other words those slaves those who commit sin will be evicted from the house 
But a son abides forever. Those who are sons will remain. So he says, therefore, if the son makes you free. So what is the son making you free from? From sin. If the son makes you free, he says, you shall be free. Indeed. That's not just in your mind of hoping that you may be free. If you have done, if you sin when you think not. I know they can't find that scripture about sin when you think not. God, there's no such thing. Sin requires thought. It has been so from the beginning and it's still so now. You understand? People are drawn away to sin by thoughts. So it's not about, oh, you just sin when you think not. In that verse 20 the Bible. When you find it, you can't find it. You can't show me it here. Here is then looking for it and you can't find it. Hallelujah. But they have it quoted and say, it's in the Bible. I know I see it somewhere. I know they can't find it. Hello, somebody. Because there's no such thing. He says, therefore, if the Son makes you free, if the Son makes you free from sin, he said it's not a temporary freedom. It's not a partial freedom. It's one that is permanent and it's one that is true. Huh? He says you shall be free indeed. It will show in your actions. Come on. In other words, it's not something we just say and hope say it's true. Uh -uh. Just like he said, you'll be my disciples indeed. If you abide in my teaching, that's the way it says, if the sun sets you free, you'll be free indeed. So if you are truly disciples, then it says, you will be truly set free from sin. And you can't be free from something you're still finding yourself in bed with. Come on. So it says, you must be free and free indeed. Come on. So because they reject the word and reject the preachers of the word, will they be saved? Not at all. Because God has chosen the foolishness of preaching to save those who believe. God has chosen what? The foolishness of preaching to save those who believe. The message that is being preached sounds foolish to them. But God has chosen this to bring about their salvation. And those who reject will perish. Come on. In 1 Corinthians 1, verse 20 to 21, he says, Where is the wise? Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world through wisdom did not know God, it pleased God through the foolishness of the message preached to save who? To save those who believe. It's not saving everybody. It's only saving those who believe. Because those who believe are testifying that God's word is true. You cannot call God's word a lie and be saved by the word. A lie does not save. Lie puts you in more bondage to more lies. But truth sets you free to live in order to what God has purposed for you before the world began. Come on. And isn't that good report? Isn't that good for the people of God to abide in truth? He says you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. That freedom comes as children of God free from sin 
free to live in ways that please God and to deny the desires and cravings of this sinful flesh and put the word of God and his spirit above it all those who do otherwise are idolaters and Paul made it clear no idolater will inherit the kingdom of God he said it in James 5 verse 19 to 21 do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God huh? that's what 1st Corinthians 6 okay 1st Corinthians 6 verse 9 to 10 do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God he says do not be deceived in other words person may make you feel say no righteous will inherit and righteous will inherit the kingdom of God man because God loves sinners he says no do not be deceived do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God do not be deceived neither fornicators nor idolaters nor adulterers nor homosexuals nor sodomites nor thieves nor covetous nor drunkards nor revilers nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God come on and there's a whole bunch of them in the scriptures Galatians 5 verse 19 to 21 Paul also made that clear yes praise God hallelujah in verse 9 to 21 says now the works of the flesh are evident the works of the flesh are what evident which are what adultery fornication uncleanness lewdness idolatry sorcery hatred contentions jealousies outbursts of wrath selfish ambitions dissensions heresies envy murders drunkenness revelries and the like means that there is more but things like that he says of which i tell you beforehand just as i told you in times past that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of god but how do we then inherit it he said we must have the fruit of the spirit it's the work of the holy spirit within our heart that we submit to that produce those fruit and also kills those desires of the flesh that is bringing us into sin that's from verse 22 to 24 22 to 24 of saint galatians 5. it says but the fruit of the spirit is love joy peace long suffering kindness goodness faithfulness gentleness self-control he says again such there is no law no law is against these things and what he says next and those who are christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires if you crucify the flesh with those passions and desires they will not lead you into sin but if you hug them up and hold on and cherish them oh yes they will that's why it says those who are mindful of the flesh cannot please God come on now but those who are mindful of the spirit he said it brings life and peace glory to God hallelujah stand with me we're going to pray it's time to release you. glory to God we know that God has prepared us and is preparing us for that great day but we cannot be prepared without the word of God 
nor without his spirit. It is word and his work of his Holy Spirit that brings us into the family of God, that presents us faultless before his throne. The word and his Holy Spirit. Come on. Without the Holy Spirit, you cannot be holy. Without the word, you don't know what to do to please God. The word gives you clarity. The Holy Spirit gives you that power to carry out the instructions given by the word. Hello, somebody. And you need them both to bring you in the fullness of God that he can say well done. Come on now. So come on, lift those hands to Jesus right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you. David said, your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. It shows me where I'm standing and it shows me where I'm going. It's a light unto my feet and a lamp unto my path. Hallelujah. And I pray that as they meditate on the word today, they will, the word will marinate in their spirit. And indeed they will rise up to worship you in spirit and in truth. We believe that your word is given to cleanse us, to remove every foul thought, belief, attitude, and views that oppose your way and desires for us. Because your word brings us understanding, brings us a grace to stand before you pure and in harmony with your will and purpose for our lives. Now let the words of our mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. Cast down every imagination, every thought, every argument, every speech, every debate the enemy wants to raise, to cluster and to cloud our mind from making a sound judgment and acceptance of your word. It's your word that brings us into that fullness. And I pray today, someone will receive the word today and receive of the life that is in the word, that eternal life. Because your truth, your word, enduring forever, it goes to all generation. And so I pray that as they hear, it will not fall on deaf ear. They will not only be hearers of the word, but be doers also. For faith without works is dead. Faith must produce obedience. Without obedience, faith is null and void. Empty hope and wish. But you are calling us into new life through Christ Jesus our Lord. And his life is available for us to experience through faith and the leading of your Holy Spirit. Thank you for grace being released now. Grace over their homes. Grace over their families. Grace over their household. Grace over their business. Grace over their relationships. That they will see you high and lifted up. Clarity will be given to them. And they will walk in newness of life. Your name will be greatly magnified. I pray that you'll tear down every wall, every obstruction, every hindrance, every setback, every scheme that the enemy is employing to delay them and cause them to procrastinate or delay the decision to give you their all. will be destroyed before them right now by the power of your word. 
dwelling in them. That they will rise up and give you the praise and all the glory. We claim the victory and declare your praise now God. In Jesus' name. Come on, give him the praise right now. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, lift us thanks to Jesus. This is my desire. Come on. To honor you. Lord, with all my heart, I worship you. Oh, yes. Hey, all I have within me, I give you praise. All that I adore is in you. Oh, come on, say it again. This is my desire. This is my desire to honor you. Lord, with all my heart, I worship you. Oh, come on, bless his name. All I have within me, all I have within me yes i give you praise hey, all that i adore is in you oh hallelujah come on lord i give you my heart yes lord i give you my heart i give you my soul I live for you. I live for you. Alone, every breath that I take, every moment I'm away. Come on, Lord, have your. Come on, say, Lord, I give you my heart. I give you my soul. I live for you. I live for you. Alone. Have your way, Lord, have your Come on, one more time. Say, Lord, I give you my heart. I give you my soul. I live for you. I live for you. Alone, every breath that I take, every moment I'm on. Oh, have your way, Lord, have your way in me. Have your way, say, Lord, have your way. Let it be your desire today. Lord, have your way in me. Give it all to the Lord and have your way. One more time, say, have your way in me. Come on, give him praise. Hallelujah. He wants to do that. He knows you've been trying it your way. But your way has been failed. Missing by, oh my God. Far from what God has planned for you. Way more than you could ever think, hope or imagine for yourself. But you must surrender to him. You must give him your all. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him. And he will what? He will direct your path. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Touch every heart that has yielded to your voice today. Lift them to that higher place of connectivity with you, fellowship and communion with you through your word and your Holy Spirit. 
transform them oh God the children of light those who will worship and serve in spirit and in truth that they'll never go back to the darkness never return to sin because every day with you is sweeter than the day before you save you keep and you satisfy there is nothing too hard for you and you love us with an unending love as we yield to your love cause every fear to disappear every procrastination every double-mindedness every wavering between two opinions will be washed away from us and indeed we'll access that life you have prepared for us in Christ Jesus we give you the praise and the glory and claim the victory in Jesus' name come on give him the praise give him the praise give him the praise give him the praise hallelujah 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 thank you lord god is good god is great yes lord thank you for all you've done lord for giving us life for you depositing up yourself within us to experience sweet relationship sweet fellowship with you that we could not have in sin but we have in christ jesus and in christ there is no sin and we thank you for grace and more grace hallelujah praise you for what you're doing right now lord we pray healing over those who are sick that your healing power will flow through their bodies now and as they raise up your faith your healing virtue will flow through every bone every joint every sinews every flesh be healed in the name of jesus healing is a children's bread rise and be healed in the name of jesus receive your healing let faith arise in your soul right now in the name of jesus hallelujah 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 yes lord raise up a standard against the enemy push back the enemy now every frustration and depression anxiety and stress hallelujah break it from off their necks break it from off their shoulders take those false weights and burdens off their heads in the name of jesus and let the peace of god that passes all understanding come upon them now in the name of jesus hallelujah receive it now receive it now receive it now in the name of jesus receive it now hallelujah in the name of jesus break every chain lord and grant them deliverance again and again in the fire your consuming fire burn out every debris every thorn the enemy has sown in their flesh everything the enemy has used to wound and afflict them destroy the weapons of the enemy and bring healing lord healing in the name of jesus healing in the name of the lord come on receive your healing right now whatever fear was pain in your start of moving check it out feel now come on in the name of jesus because god is moving by spirit and he's able to do exceedingly abundantly and above all 
you could ever think hope or imagine hallelujah yes God let provision come to that one in need now more provision meet every need because you said you know those things that we have need of and we seek your kingdom and said all these things shall be added unto us in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus bring the addition Lord increase our supply expand our boundaries expand our borders expand our territory in the name of Jesus as we walk by faith and not by sight in Jesus name come on praise him come on praise him praise the Lord praise the Lord praise the Lord praise the Lord hallelujah you've been blessed by the word today praise God who wanted to be blessed who wanted to grow in the knowledge of the Lord in the word of God because there's power in the word of God amen praise God I will give you a chance to sow and then we release you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Those, while you're doing so, I'll speak to those who are watching online. The final word and then give you the benediction. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, those who are watching online, you're watching Increasing Faith Deliverance Ministries. You are at 3 East Street, Montego Bay, Jamaica. I'm a pastor Richard Fagan declaring the gospel of Christ and his kingdom. We wanted to know the truth, the whole truth, and not but the truth. We are not sugarcoating this message for anyone. Those who don't like it, that's fine. Those who approve and receive the message, it will work wonders in their life. Because that's the purpose of the world. To bring you into the full relationship with the Lord. And the Lord doesn't desire a relationship with you in sin. It is that relationship with you in His Son, in His righteousness. In his holiness in his truth hallelujah and he says you must come to him none can come to the father but through him and he's the way the truth and the life praise God so we have a book we release out there it's called the gospel of the kingdom you can order it online praise God and those that are in the vicinity can of course get get it from us we have it still here at the church for those that would want the copy praise god we have the hard copy here or you can order it online to amazon.com hallelujah go on amazon.com and type in the search box richard v fagan and the book will come up you can order it anywhere around the world through that or you can order it through kindle go on kindle and download it to your device you can read it on your phone and your tablet to your convenience but once you add that word to your library it's called the gospel of the kingdom subtitled the gospel that jesus preached we know there's a lot of things that are preached out there it's not quite the gospel and because of that people are still in sin while still claiming salvation and that is deception that's not the gospel the gospel never claimed salvation in sin that's why repentance is always required for one to receive salvation and repentance is more than just saying I'm sorry it's turning from sin to righteousness hallelujah and God wants us to know that amen praise God so we encourage you to get into the word you can order it online or you can see more of the teachings on Facebook send a friend's request to Richard B. Fagan he'll be plugged into the live stream we have five live stream services on Facebook five live stream services on Facebook that I streamed on Facebook and we know that it will help you to get more word in the word amen praise God it can increase your faith and fellowship in the Lord and there are more words that we added to our YouTube version you can look on YouTube for Richard Lee Fagan and subscribe you'll see we added more scripture to the YouTube version of the streaming because we are not able to put all the text in it when we are doing it live but when we go back to play it and 
run it on YouTube. We are able to add more scriptures to it for persons who are taking notes. So you can always check the YouTube version to get the scriptures and to have it so you can answer about your faith in the Lord more boldly to those who inquire. Amen. Praise God. And those who want to know more about us, you can check out our website. It's increasingfaithintl.org. That's increasingfaithintl.org. Praise God. So those who desire to sow can sow through the website. The offers are there on the front page. And of course, my number, if you want to contact me, is 979 876-8369-9390. 876-557-2427. So I'll just give you the office number but you can give me that praise god right but we stay in the word i believe your faith will be built up remember also we have our daily bread that we have put out for the month of january february march and april and it's free you're not charging for the daily bread it can be what's up to your phone or to your device and you can read it on your phone as a book in other words it's open as a book on your phone and you can read it on your phone and this a daily study of the word every day of the month for the month of February, March, and April. January, February, March, and April is already ready. And it's all free of cost. You can just WhatsApp me to the message to the number and I'll send it to you. And you can read it or I can email it to you if you so desire. Praise God. We encourage you to get your most holy faith meet up in the word. We know that we live by bread alone, but we live by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Praise God. So you've been blessed today. Highly good to have you all and good to share this time with you. And for those who took the time to watch us online, a baby at work or at home or wherever you are around the world, we encourage you to keep watching and to keep building the most holy faith in the Lord. Until next time, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Well, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord have his countenance upon you and give you his peace. God bless you. Have a great day. In Jesus' name.